uh, any board of rabbis or any particular body. Hang on a second. Uh, Ms. Lenita, could you explain to me how it is that we get from Ethiopia to Israel? I mean, what's the, the historical roots of the Ethiopian Jews? There are four theories of how Ethiopians got to be Jews. Okay. The first, which is the most romantic, is that the Queen of Sheba, who was exceedingly beautiful, went to Israel and met King Solomon, who fell in love with her. And actually, the story goes, he seduced her one night, and uh, she bore him a child, and then went back to Ethiopia, practiced Judaism, and her son, Menelik, was the first king of Ethiopia and was Jewish, went back and studied with his father. I like that. That's a yes. good story. <laughs> a second theory is that during the Exodus and when the tribe of Dan, when uh, Moses was crossing the Red Sea, Dan just quite didn't make it. They got lost along the way. And many of those Jews wandered down into Ethiopia and started practicing some beginning form of, of Judaism. A third theory is that there was a, a, a colony of Jews in the island of Elephantine in Egypt. There's uh, recently a book that just came out, The um, uh, Sign in the Seal, oh, which sure. says that the, uh, uh, Ark, the Ark of the, of the Covenant, Covenant is, is, in, is in, uh, in Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. And that theory maintains that those Jews actually were in Egypt and then wandered down into Ethiopia to bring the, the Covenant, the, the right. Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And the fourth theory is that the Jews of Aden crossed the Red Sea, intermarried with the Ethiopians, and that's how you get the Jews. The point is, for 2,500 years, these people, the Beta Yisrael, have considered themselves Jews and have always longed to go back to Jerusalem. And now they have made it. Uh, so, um, Rabbi Fanet, do you uh, trace, uh, does your organization trace its roots uh, in any similar, to any similar story? It is not necessarily a matter of historically tracing roots. We feel that it could be. There have been several books written. Uh, most of these scholars are not quote-unquote accepted in several uh, circles of academia. But our feeling is that the House of Israel became a nation in Africa, in Egypt. Our feeling is that the Torah was given at Sinai, which is a part of Egypt, which is in Africa. So that when we look at the geographic location of where the Bible story takes place, we feel that these people were, in fact, people of color. So therefore, our forefathers, before they were brought to the Western Hemisphere, uh, could have practiced Judaism. Uh, diaspora, they think of occurring in North Africa and into Europe. Our theory is that the Jews were more familiar with Africa than they were with Europe. And what's wrong with diaspora having happened in Central, South, and West Africa? So that... Uh, from our scholarship, from the books that we have read, it is what we consider to be the fact. So it is a reconnecting for us. And besides, the first Jew, Abraham, it was an issue of faith. The 12th chapter of Genesis, God told Abraham to get up and to go out. And the rabbis teach that before Abraham could get up and go out, that he had to get up and go in. He went into himself. Well, you know, you've written, uh, we've spoken at least, about the lack of references uh, to Africa in the Bible and as well as in the history books. Yes. Can you talk to that for a second? Well, briefly speaking, um, Professor uh, Ephraim Isaac, who is the head of Semitic Studies at Princeton University, was here in Chicago in 1987 addressing Hadassah, uh, five or six hundred women at a luncheon. And he was lecturing about the Ethiopian Jews and about Ethiopia. And as he finished, a woman asked the question, Professor Isaac, you know, I'm really shocked and amazed that there are Jews in Ethiopia. And it, it's just really astounded me. And Professor Isaac says, I find that surprising. And she said, why? He said, where are you from? She said, I'm from Poland and all of my people are from Poland. Professor Isaac said, you know, that's interesting. Ethiopia is mentioned in the Bible over 50 times. Poland is not mentioned once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so <laughs> you, yeah, you no. find it so surprising sure, sure. That, that there would be yeah. African people that want to yeah. connect themselves yeah. with the faith of Abraham. Yeah. So call it no more than, than us going into ourselves and saying that we have decided 
that Judaism is right for us. Ms. Ledina, how are the Beta Israel doing in Israel now? Because as you read, I've read that there have been some problems with racism and various, and the, the fact that I guess a lot of the the uh, religious community in Israel don't exactly accept the version of, of Judaism practiced by the Beta Israel. How's it going? There's an Amharic proverb which goes, Kas bakas in kolal ba yehida, which means, slowly, slowly, even an egg will walk. Okay? I think that uh, the new immigrants in Israel are not only walking at this point, but they are even running. And why do I say this is, number one, I believe that they've really begun to, to use the political system. The more press that you get about the problems of Ethiopian Jews, mm -hmm. it's because they themselves are learning to use that the political, political system yes. to go out and protest, to demand more from the bureaucracy of Israel, to demand more from the Ministry of Housing, the Ministry of Absorption, from all of the school systems, and to demand more also from the Israeli rabbinate. There's questions about whether the Ethiopian rabbis will be accepted as full rabbis or not. Right. And they have gone in front of the Knesset, they have fasted and protested and said we are as much rabbis as everybody else and now there's negotiating going on which will allow them a step into the rabbinate. Well, now, hold the thought, and we're going to come back uh, for a final segment with our guests discussing uh, African Jews, African American Jews, and other Hebraic topics. Uh, be right back. Well, so, I mean, but there's, there's legit.